so it works. I got a little stand here. That's nice. Using these tripods. Hopefully that doesn't cover up the mic. But um Yeah. So I tried some new settings I looked up on on the YouTubes last night for this uh <coughs> for the filming quality of my videos with a vlog camera. So if it's in and out of focus, apologies. If it's not as good, apologies. Either way, it's on a fucking vlog camera, so how good can it be? You know what I mean? All right, so I'm just gonna give you guys some insight into my Sunday daily routine. Um, since most people like a day in the life, this won't exactly be a day in the life, but I will at least be able to tell you what I do. So, um, wake up. Sometimes my Mesa cycle lands where I'm training on Sundays, which today, Sunday, I am training. Um, I'll be doing push, so you guys will get to see my final week of my Mesa cycle, I think. I might have one more. Um, I'll be pushing some pretty heavy loads on the close grip bench press. Uh, that'll be fun. And I'll, as I go through this session, talk about more of what I do. But so far, I woke up, I had some pre, made an intra shake. This will, this is prior to me working for the day. So after this, I'll sit down, I'll work for a good four to six hours, depending on how much work I have. Um, come back, potentially train again, and then go back home finish up some work tasks, and wind down. And that's really my Sundays. No matter where I am, um, workcation, because I don't vacation, you know, as online, people who work online, coaches, uh, sports scientists, uh, engineers, most of what we do is workcations. <laughs> There's not really any time off. Uh, anybody who contracts or is contractor knows that. Um, so, Gonna we'll do this session, go back, eat some food, and begin my work day. Uh, follow along. Thank you guys for continuing to watch. Again, hopefully this quality, pretty pale, maybe we'll fix that. Um, let's get to it. Definitely got a poo. Should be a tough one. Hopefully, we're walking all the way back. We're just gonna see how long we can hold this poo in, guys. It's gonna be a hard one. Working. Working weight today is either 345 
or 350. I'll have to check. But um, 135 for a few. 225 when you get strong enough. That's kind of your jumps. Um, 275 for a couple. 315 for a couple. Potentiate over my working weight for the day. So I'll probably do 365 for a couple. Back down to my working weight and I'll do all my sets at my working weight. So that's how the warm up's gonna look. I'm gonna hop to it. try that with heavy heavy loads for you guys but I'm just literally like I did a lot of push-ups and stuff before I started some arm swings uh, I'm doing some benching and as I'm doing my light sets we're kind of like doing a bit of a skull to warm up the triceps too um, it just helps my elbows quite a bit something I do something like a niche or like a little idiosyncrasy of mine um, I've done it for a long time so as I warm up for bench press I'm doing the bench Gonna rock it back, warm up my triceps. You know, it's not something you need to do. It's just something I've done for a while. Especially don't try it with that. <laughs> um, I'm a very strong presser. I always have been, and a lot of that comes from my triceps. Uh, but you know, we're targeting uh, the triceps with this one because it's a close grip bench. I looked at the sheet. It says 355. For my working sets, <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm gonna go ahead and work up to 365. That's why we do potentiation sets because seeing how your potentiation set feels relative to how it usually feels, you'll know if that working weight is good for the day. So, um, if you just work up to your working weight and you try to do a set right away. Oftentimes the second set feels best and I've talked about that in many places so Instead of that happening you work up and do potentiation for one or two reps it primes you and Then you can make the decision Okay time to go up to the working weight or hmm, This is pretty light. Let's see if I can go up a little bit So I'm going to potentiate with 365 10 pounds over 355 by that point, I'll know if I can get eight reps or not. So I'm gonna keep warming up. Far so good. by this time I'm pretty able to tell if I'm, I'm gonna be good for the day potentiations are still smart even if you're advanced but as an advanced trainee I'm usually like okay it's weight today it's moving um, it's not always like that so again potentiation still pretty damn smart to do but uh, I'm gonna hop to it get this potentiation set see what happens Let's just see what happens. I like to say that, don't I? Oh. Oh boy, here we go. All right, 65 potentiation. 
Feeling good? Feeling good. I'm gonna try to make this one to where I can just talk. I know it's echoey as fuck in here. Uh, I'm trying to make it to where I can just talk. These videos are gonna be, obviously you've already seen two of them, shorter little vlog style workout videos that I'm doing out here in Detroit. We're going to Masters Nationals driving up tomorrow, so um, you'll see me in a different location. If I get a video out, I might not. Maybe I'll try to record some of the process with the mic. <laughs> but um, I'm going to try to talk through this one because the, the editing and shit, it's not my forte. Um, it could be. I just don't want to spend the time to do it. And uh, got a lot of other shit to do. So I'll try to upload this one today, get it out tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Let's train. Let's train. Boys. So that's feeling really good. I could probably do that for eight. So because I have another week on the app, it'll either bump my weight up again, because that's what's been doing weekly, or it'll give me uh, reps to beat. But I think 355 for eight seven should be pretty damn good. Potentiation felt great. Let's go, I'll see what happens. Let's fuck see what I see, I see it all the time. Fuck me. All right, so about to hit 355 uh, for a set of eight. The app says eight. These are gonna be one to two in the tank. So you'll get to see what that looks like for me. Not that it holds much merit. People have different fiber types. People shit out faster than other people. People have been dieting for a long time, have low glycogen. People have uh, been training a specific way for a long time, and that leads to the slowing of rep speeds. Rep speed is a shitty indicator of proximity to failure if you don't know the athlete. So when you guys are parroting other people talking about rep speed, like all oh, that looked like two in the tank, you probably have no idea. If the person's really fucking good at training and they really have a good uh, mind-muscle connection on the eccentric and concentric, and you've watched a lot of their sets, maybe you can use rep speed as an indicator. Um, a lot of people slow their rep speed intentionally as they approach uh, lower IR, RIRs to make it look like they're failing too. So just because the rep speed slows or because the rep speed hardly slows down, it doesn't mean you know where that person is proximity to failure wise. You're gonna watch me do this and I'm, it's gonna look like I'm fucking smoking them but if I were to do one to two more past what I'm about to do, I, I would be done. My triceps and chest are pretty damn fast twitch. And what that looks like is like fast, slow eccentric, fast, slow eccentric, <laughs> oh, stuck, done. So a lot of people are like that, especially people transitioning from powerlifting to bodybuilding. You'll notice that oftentimes because on the spectrum of slower to faster twitch fibers, they've been training with lower volumes, which means they, similar to uh, endurance adaptations, they are more prone for being more in that whatever fast switch fibers are fast switch genetically are fast switch. Whatever slower switch fibers were slow switch genetically might not be so slow switch because they've been training for strength for so long. So they're more in the mid range. Um, these adaptations occur over the long, over long periods of time. So if I get done with a strength block or a maintenance period to resensitize myself to volume, that's kind of what I'm talking about. I've done high volume for so long that I'm a little bit, and dieted for so long that I'm a little bit more slow twitch in those faster twitch fibers. I can grind out more reps. The second I take a maintenance period and I resensitize myself to volume, resensitize those bigger, faster motor units to kind of what their normal uh, range in that fiber type disposition is, then that's that resensitization effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Um, I'm probably gonna smoke eight. And you guys will think, wow, he had 10 left. 
but it's 355 pounds, guys. Come on, give me a break. Let me give you a different angle too, different angle. Let's go, let's go over here. Yeah, what's this look like? How's that? Oh, oh, that's a pretty setup. My powerlifting friends will be proud of me. Let's see. Oh yeah, oh yeah. A little bit of music, a little music. So you saw, pretty good. One or two in the tank there. We're gonna go ahead and set it up on this side, same thing. You can see the difference. I think I got seven this set, maybe six. Let me check the app. You'll see at the end, I might flash cards this one. Since I'm not editing any volume stuff or audio shit. Um, we gotta go ahead and get seven. In the later weeks, you know? You gotta hype yourself up a little bit when no one's around. But those felt good. Uh, I think I got two sets there. One or two on the down set. Weighted dips. That's the AM session. I'm not gonna say, let's see what happens. I'm not gonna say, all right, let's see what happens. All right, logging my sets. It's asking me for chest soreness. Healed just on time. Um, then I'm logging my sets. You're gonna see when I flash the card, just at zero RIR. I have another week. I'm being a little more intelligent. Doing one in the tank this week. Eight, seven, went down. It went down, it's asking joint pain. Low pain, a little bit in the elbows here. Um, it's mostly accumulation of doing dumbbell laterals, heavy rows close grip and pull-ups for this meso. So it's not technically specific to the exercise, but I am feeling it on the exercise. So I want to go ahead and write that down. Um, be honest with the app, always. I was going to set that down, but I guess I'm not going to. Going to 285. It's going to have me do 12. We'll see what happens there. Um, yeah, so 12 to 285. I'll just put this right back where it was. Uh, a little bit more on the intra, since I didn't say too much. But I <clears throat> definitely have these during massing. And I keep them in as long as I can during cutting periods. Perry workout nutrition, or that is the window around training. Two hours prior, four hours post, something like that. Uh, plus the intra. It's very, very, very important. Restore glycogen, get nutrients to the tissue quicker, especially with higher glycemic carbohydrates. Create a auspicious hormonal environment for muscle growth after you activate specific mechanisms to do so. So we're gonna tear some shit up, have the nutrients readily available, faster nutrient delivery, and for blood glucose purposes, helps you get through longer training sessions. 
which especially on week like three, four, they're getting into the hour and a half, two hour range. Muy importante. So, I drink about 30 grams of carbs sipped for 20 to 30 minutes before I came over here. That's kind of how I do it. And for me, usually that's driving to the gym, sipping, um, waking up, taking some caffeine, all that good shit. So, para mí, about 60 to 70 grams carbs, uh, 20 grams protein. It's a good ratio, about a three to one ratio there of protein to carbs, no fats, just what's in the way. Fortunately, I have an isopure, so there's zero fat, zero carb in that. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the set. 12 is gonna be fucking tough, I won't lie. But we'll see what happens here. Again, again with that shit, guys, fuck me. Um, 12, we're not gonna see what happens. We will, but we won't, because I don't wanna say it, but we're going to, so we're not gonna see what happens, because I'm gonna do it. Which means you're gonna kinda see. All right, fuck me. We're just gonna do this. That's really close to failure for me for a, for a heavy compound with no assistance or no spot. But it paid off. Apisane nine. Nine should be good. I should get nine. Um, fuck man, this is tough. Whew. Um, yeah, I'm just kicking butt. Like, no bias. <laughs> Never doing anything else again. Amazing. It's just accurate. On week four of my training, like, just impressive. Very, very impressive. We gonna go ahead. You can make it. Oh God, no. I was almost worried about like skin complexion and then I remember I had a white shirt on for like the quality. I'm good. My shirt's gotta be whiter than my skin, right? That's okay. We'll make up for it. So the app will ask pump rating. Um, it's crazy because my volume stayed relatively consistent as far as sets go um, through this meso. And that's because as I've gone through it, I've gotten like more and more food, more and more carbohydrates, gain more weight. 
So my pumps have gone up even with relatively consistent sets, which is cool because auto regulatory wise, as a coach, I would do the same thing. That mesa cycle going from extreme dieting and then active rest, maintenance, back into a higher volume meso, you're gonna get crazy pumps the second you touch a weight. You're full of glycogen again, you're eating good foods, lots of sodium. And metabolites likely have an independent mechanism for hypertrophy. So that's why we use the pump rating. But with that, my pumps have been better and better, even with this lower set. So on the app, um, I'm, I'm going ahead and checking amazing pump. It's keeping my sets consistent. Basically this entire meso, I might've added a set or two here and there. Like I think dips, this will be my first time adding sets on dips, this whole meso cycle. So I'm gonna do dips. I already have a crazy fucking pump and I'm rating that on the app. So next week, I assume I'll do the exact same amount of sets for this session. I might go up by reps and that's it. Cause I'm gonna rate this as an amazing pump and that it pushed my limits more than likely because I'm already, I'm already dying. So I'm gonna set this up, go ahead and do these dips. Yeah, let's get it. So once we add some weight, I think about 50 pounds, maybe a little more, I'll check. Might be 60, so I'm gonna add 60 pounds. I'm up about <laughs> four. So that'll account for the 2.5, you'll see. But I'm gonna put it between my legs and I'll show you how that works. All right, I got this 60 pound dumbbell here. I'm going to basically, I'm sure Mike has a dip belt somewhere, but I'm just gonna take it and, ooh, this hit it. I'll put it right here. Or you can put it between both legs. I just put it in the middle of one. So that should be good. Probably just do that. Be heavy. Those are slick. Um, so that's all I'll do without a dip belt. A weighted dip. Um, you can also put it in between both legs. Just grab it. Try to put it here. It kind of squashes me, so I don't like to do that. Um, yeah. First set's like 15 or so. I'll show you the other way this time. And I'll just try to do a set like it. I'm squashing myself for you guys. Well, this is fucking tough. I might not be able to do that. So, back in the day, when I had smaller legs, I could just put the dumbbell right here. Maybe a skinnier dumbbell would work, or a longer handle. But that shit ain't flying today. We're just gonna go back to this. Put it right here. Again, dip belts are best, but I don't feel like getting one. Typical me fashion, the camera's gonna die. <laughs> so, that was the session. One or two more sets of, ooh, one or two more sets of dips. And I'll be done. But again, work day. After this, I'll go eat 100, 250 grams of carbs high glycemic sources with some protein. Whoo! 
and then um, work a bunch. Work, eat, check on Mike, make sure he's feeling okay mentally. <laughs> and uh, that'll be it. So guys, thanks for watching these vlogs so far. Vlog style training videos, it's not technically a vlog. And hopefully there's some good tidbits in here. I tried to say a little more so that way I could not voice over and worry about all that. So, again, thanks for watching. Hopefully you were impressed by my weights and my weight and, you know, my, my brain balls. Uh, let's just keep fucking growing. Let's keep doing the damn thing. Guys, like, comment, share, subscribe, YouTube stuff, whatever the hell I'm supposed to say. I'll never get used to that. You think I would with being with the RP YouTube channel for so long. But, adios. Enjoy your day. Hasta luego. Peace out, guys.